Good afternoon. Welcome to the Chinese Historical Society of America. By the middle of the 1800s, a Chinese uh, mystic who spent several weeks at a Christian missionary falls into a coma. And when he comes out of the coma, he realizes he is the younger brother of Jesus Christ. His last name was Hong, and he began a great uprising called the Great Heavenly Peace Uprising, the Taiping Uprising. And it was to free the land and make everybody equal. But what it did eventually was uh, last for 14 years and cost the lives of over 20 million people. This devastated large portions of China, the South, notwithstanding. There's whole areas that are devastated. There's a huge social unrest. Now, as men begin to come to the seacoast, they begin to fork in two different uh, directions. One is, they start to walk south. If you walk south out of southern China, you end up in, oh my, you end up in Vietnam. If you continue further south, you end up in uh, the peninsula, you end up in Indonesia, Malaysia, etc. cetera. Uh, if you go to the seacoast, there are foreign ships waiting. And as it just so happened during this time period, it happened to be during a period of expansion for many Western nations. Now, here's a push factor. This area between 1850 and 1900, the areas that you see marked in beige and brown, saw 14 floods, seven typhoons of a Katrina sandy nature. Of course, with so much death and destruction, five years of epidemics, four earthquakes, and two years of complete drought, meaning that every year something happened which was to drive these men off the land, drive them off the land. They stepped aboard ships in the early and middle 1800s because of something very basic that had happened in another part of the world. Spain and England had ended slavery. As a matter of fact, America had ended the slave trade as well. Didn't mean they had ended slavery, but they had stopped the slave trade, which meant that they couldn't go raiding in Africa or deal with Africans who traded in slaves anymore. They needed cheap labor. The British found that source of cheap labor in two places. The Punjabi of India, where they found Indian farmers who were willing to leave, and of course, Kwantung province, where thousands and thousands of men were being driven to the seacoast almost every year to look for work. If they were lucky, they ended up someplace that wasn't too bad. If they were unlucky, they were set up in lots of 20 or 30. The numbers were painted on their chest. Uh, nobody registered their names. And they might be sent to the guano mines of Peru. I don't know if you're familiar with the guano mines of Peru. People know what guano is, yes? It's the uh, droppings, dry droppings of bats. In some of the caves of Peru, it had been going on for millions of years. So it's several feet thick. It happens to also be a, a very important component in fertilizer and explosives. So these men would cut it with various tools and bring it out in chunks. The life expectancy of a guano miner was a, roughly a year and a half. Terrible trade. But in the middle of all of this, something was to happen in California that drew thousands of these men here, right here. What happened in California in 1848? Oh, gosh. Wrong. 1848. Gold is discovered. The gold rush doesn't happen until 1849. Please join me over here. Just making sure you're still awake. You can watch this or other American Artifacts programs anytime by visiting our website, cspan.org/history.